In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about methodologies. It's useful or important to have a methodology as you go through an ethical hacking engagement so you're not using a shotgun approach and have no process or procedure to help you along. The thing about a methodology is that it provides you a framework for you to know what steps you need to take in what order you probably need to take them in so that you can have a clean, well-run engagement that actually gets results that you can present to your client. While it's certainly possible to come up with your own methodology, there are a couple of methodologies that are available and you can certainly use those as a starting point. And you probably will want to, over time, do some refining as you continue to work more and know what works best for you and the types of engagements you have. These open source methodologies have an advantage of being available and put together by people who have put a lot of thought and have a lot of experience. But they're also very generic and not targeted to maybe the types of engagements that you expect to be working on. So while they're great starting points and you may very well use them on an ongoing basis and never make any changes, don't assume that you can't make changes to these or that they're something that's set in stone and you should never ever change them. The Institute for Security and Open Methodologies has this thing called the OSSTMM, which is the Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual. You can find it online. You can see here I've got a PDF open of it. It's a pretty big document. It's got all sorts of extraneous information, which is important to the people who are involved in it. You've got the contributors here. And it takes several pages before we get down into the actual meat of the document. But let's take a quick skim through the table of contents. Section A is information security. And they talk about doing a competitive intelligence review and a privacy review and just document grinding. And document grinding is getting architecture documents and policies and procedures and any sort of documentation that you can get from your client or your target and just digging through it to see what you can find and what you can learn. Section B is about process security. It talks about risk assessment values, and they talk about request testing and guided suggestion testing and trusted persons testing, and those are three different types of testing that they have guidance around. Section C is all about internet technology security. Again, they talk about risk assessment values, and the modules for this particular section include logistics and controls, network surveying, competitive intelligence review, privacy review, the document grinding, vulnerability research and verification, internet application testing, which would be probably web applications, although it may include just network-facing applications, routing, trusted systems testing, access control testing, intrusion detection system testing, containment measures testing, password cracking, denial of service, security policy review. Then we get into communication security where we're dealing with PBX testing and voicemail testing and possibly a fax review as well as looking at modems. There's a section for wireless security and we talk about the different types of wireless networks including Bluetooth and wireless input devices and handheld security, cordless communications, and there's also sections for ARFID and infrared systems testing. So as you can see, there's a pretty detailed and comprehensive amount of information in this particular methodology document. They take a lot of things into consideration. There's also physical security, which is something that is definitely worthwhile to look at, although it may or may not be something that you would get into as an ethical hacker. Physical security is really important. It involves not only the perimeter with respect to things like fencing and guard houses and those sorts of physical security measures, but there's monitoring and there's also inside, this would fall under the environment review, there's things like a clean desk policy 
and whether people have left information up on whiteboards that could be gathered by visitors coming through the building or whether there's sensitive documents that have been left out on people's desks. There's also some templates here for reporting. There's some social engineering templates here which are useful if you start getting into social engineering aspects. I wouldn't necessarily expect that you would be following this entire methodology on every engagement that you were involved with, but this is definitely a good set of information, certainly as a starting point for you to follow as you are starting to work into doing ethical hacking. Another methodology here is from the OISSG. And this is a penetration testing methodology. You can see here they've got a wiki set up and some similar sorts of things, although this is more targeted at an actual penetration test where the other one is more geared towards something that's closer to a security assessment where you're assessing the entire risk posture of the organization and you're doing a full round of security testing. This methodology is more targeted at, I just want to see if I can break in and what you would do to do the penetration and how you would handle that as well as getting out and covering your tracks and also cleaning up and destroying any artifacts from your test. So there's not a cookbook here of these are the steps you take. It's a methodology document where at a somewhat high level, you want to talk about the different steps you would take to achieve the different goals that you have for your penetration test or your security assessment or your ethical hacking engagement. And that's the purpose of a methodology.